Hello everyone, my name is Paul Third, and today I'm going to teach you how to do three things. One, I'm going to show you how you can visualize harmonics and daliasing in analyzers, plugin doctor and also in the DAW as well. Two, I'm going to show you how you can actually test if what you are seeing in the analyzers is correct by running physical sweeps and importing them into Isotope RX. In three, I'm going to show you how you can actually hear the negative effects of aliasing and how the effects of oversampling reduce aliasing and the sound of oversampling. I'm actually going to show you the sound of oversampling today. Basically, harmonics, aliasing, I'm going to try and cover everything for you today. It's going to be a bit of a long one, but I'm going to try and cover as much as physically possible. Real gear, plugins. Some plugins that are recreating it quite well, other plugins, and you probably have an idea who that plugin manufacturer is, aren't doing a very good job at recreating the non-linearities of the hardware. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so to understand aliasing, you've got to first understand harmonics. Once you have an understanding of harmonics and the frequency range and sample rates, then you can understand aliasing, right? So, first off, we've got our fundamental. So your fundamental is basically your, your base tone, right? Okay, it's your first frequency. All harmonics are related to the fundamental. So in this scenario here, we've got a one kilohertz tone and all of the little lines that you see after 1K are harmonics. It's all that's below one kilohertz is noise and that's just the plugin, okay? It's got nothing to do with harmonics, all right? Now, as you can see in Plugin Doctor, right, from left to right, you've got 20 hertz all the way to just past 20 kilohertz. Now, how I am measuring this in Plugin Doctor is I have got this set up to 48 kilohertz session. Okay, so this is 48 kilohertz. Now, the easiest way to think about it, whenever you're dealing with sample rates and sample rates and frequency range, is to half your sample rate. Now, the reason why correlating frequency range and sample rate is so important is because once you have an understanding of how sample rate correlates to frequency range, you could then have an understanding of what Nyquist is. And in a nutshell, Nyquist is your end frequency, okay? Nyquist is the frequency that your frequency range ends on. So in this specific setup, at 48K, the computer can only process frequencies that are below 24 kilohertz. Right, so think about 24 kilohertz, almost like a brick wall, okay? It's not gonna let any frequencies pass it. But the problem is that those numbers are still being processed. Those ones and zeros, okay? Those frequencies that are being made past 24K are still being processed. But the issue is that they cannot be represented past 24K. And these harmonics that are made past 24 kilohertz are folded back into the frequency spectrum, into our audible range, randomly and what you will find is that the aliasing appears below the fundamental which means that there is no relation to the fundamental thus they are not musical so what i'm going to show you now is how to check if a plugin has aliasing if it's making enough higher order harmonics that go past nyquist and bounce back into the frequency spectrum now the easiest way to do this is to create a 10 kilohertz tone, okay? So it's very simple, just type in 10,000 in the plugin doctor, and as you can see, there is higher order harmonics being made, but we can't see them. But we can see that they have been reflected back into the frequency spectrum below the fundamental, which is now 10 kilohertz. And as we can see, those lines, those harmonics that are below the fundamental, which is 10 kilohertz, is aliasing. And in terms of the input, and I've spoken about this in other videos, in terms of harmonics and the way that kind of analog units work, the harder you go into a lot of analog units, what you're going to find is that they're going to saturate more, which means they're going to create more harmonics, which means that the more higher order harmonics they make, the more harmonics are going to get bounced back, which means there's going to be more aliasing. So as you can see here, I'm driving the unit harder, making more high order harmonics that you actually can't see because they're going past 24K, and then they're being bounced back. And this is why, in many videos, and I've mentioned it many times, this is why 
Many people work at higher sample rates or they oversample to a higher sample rate to widen the frequency spectrum. So what happens is you increase Nyquist, you increase your frequency range. So instead of having 20 hertz to 24 kilohertz of frequency range, you've now got 20 hertz to 48 kilohertz of frequency range, which means that more higher order harmonics can be processed by the computer are not going to hit that brick wall at 48k and then bounce back. More higher order harmonics can be processed by the system. Now, we can't hear these harmonics, but when they are bounced back as aliasing, it comes into our audible range, which is lower than the fundamental, and then we can hear it. So in a sense, recreating all of like the analog non-linearities of the gear making harmonics that we can't even hear in the digital realm actually has a negative effect if they come back as aliasing because it comes in to our audible peripheral. So that is why many people oversample, upsample, so you widen your frequency range, you increase Nyquist, and the higher Nyquist is, the more higher order harmonics you can make, which means that less higher order harmonics will bounce back as aliasing. And that there is harmonics and aliasing and sample rates. So that's kind of the boring stuff out of the way in terms of like visualizing it and plugging doctor on what you're seeing. How about we actually look into how you would test it in terms of actually how you'd be able to test it in the DAW and actually double check what you're seeing in Plugin Doctor and if it actually is reading through in terms of its harmonic content and also in terms of its aliasing. What I've done is I've loaded in um, the Waves Quick Tech. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a 10k sine tone, right? And we're going to have Pro Q3 after it, which we will be able to then see in the DAW and measure the harmonic content that's made as well as any aliasing. So as you can see there, just running through that unit it is making aliasing. Fab filter is basically around like the 100 dB range. You can go much, much further down. You have much, you, you have a much larger dB scale in Plugin Doctor. But either way, it is making some aliasing. Okay. Now, this may look low to many people. They might say, right, okay, like it looked a lot in Plugin Doctor, but it looks quite low using this technique. So how about we actually test it? How, how about we actually print a physical sweep? Now, sweeps are what we can use to basically process a small part of a signal, load it into like a spectral analyzer, and it'll basically perfectly show us harmonic content and also aliasing as well. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to print the sweep with the Poltec on it to a separate track. And then once I've exported it into my desktop, I am then going to go into Isotope RX7. That's what I've got. I'm then going to open that file. And as you can see, harmonics and aliasing, right? Now, um, the first big line, like the, the big brightest line, that is your original tone, okay? That is your main tone. That is your main signal. Everything that's going from right to left is harmonics. When they reach um, the top of the frequency spectrum, okay, as you can see there, look, it's 24k, what you can see is that those harmonics bounce back, which again is aliasing. So as you can see, the harmonics are rising, 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 bang, to Nyquist, and then bouncing back, okay? So that is aliasing, and as you can see, there is quite a lot of aliasing, and the aliasing signal is nearly just as strong as the harmonic. So it reaches Nyquist, bounces back down and bounces back up again. So to me, looking at that sweep, I would say that Plugin Doctor had the most realistic result in this instance because um, using Pro Q3, it only really looked like it had kind of one kind of like order like of aliasing coming through that was audible, but in actual fact, when you print it, it's actually shown quite a lot of aliasing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another Pultec emulation, okay? One that I use all the time, which is the Noise Ash Realtek. Now, the interesting thing with the Realtek is that it oversamples, okay? So it internally increases Nyquist, so um, it's not aliasing. So as you can see here, it's actually showing more aliasing than the Waves Puig Tech, okay? Let's put on the oversampling. Look at that. Nearly all the oversampling is gone. But as you can see, the higher order harmonics are gone as well, which is a little bit of a trick, in my opinion. Um, it's kind of like an easy way out. Sometimes what many developers will do is they'll kind of just really, they'll take out all of the high order harmonic content. But, but we can't hear it anyway. 
as I said, I was saying earlier, we can't hear really past 20k, and many people can't hear 15, 18k anyway. So it kind of makes sense, but um, it's a bit of a cheap way of doing it because there's many plugins that don't do this and still manage to um, keep the high order harmonics without cutting them off altogether and not having any aliasing, right? So what we'll do is we'll print two sweeps, we'll print um, oversampling off, and we'll print a sweep with oversampling on. And from there, we'll be able to see what kind of aliasing is actually in the plugin. So as you can see, with the noise ash, with the oversampling off, it actually does tie up with everything that we've seen. So in terms of the Pro Q3, the Pro Q3 was showing that we had more aliasing. We've printed the sweep, we've loaded it into RX-7, and as you can see, the noise ash with oversampling off does indeed make more aliasing than the Puig Tech. But also, as you can see, the Rule Tech makes stronger, higher order harmonics as well. Now, can you see how the lines are, are much brighter? Basically, think of it that the brighter these lines are, the stronger the signal is. So in comparison to the Puig Tech versus the Noise Ash, it is making a higher level of harmonics, which is the main reason why it is aliasing more in the Puig Tech, because it's making more higher order harmonics. The level of the harmonics are stronger. So knowing that, oversampling makes sense. So let's see what the spectral analysis looks like when we bring in the sweep with oversampling on. So as you can see there, there's a massive, massive difference. Nearly all the aliasing has been cut off. There's a slight bit of aliasing there. A slight bit of aliasing, but you're, to me, you're not going to hear that. To me, that's as clean as you're going to get. And many plugins struggle to get as clean as that. Um, but again, it shows you the benefit of oversampling. It shows you the difference in terms of how much aliasing gets brought in without oversampling and the importance of oversampling and how closer to the hardware that's going to be because it has less unmusical frequencies being brought in to the audible frequency range. Right, so let's test this via the hardware, right? So this is the Access Analog Pultec. So as you can see, no matter what I do here, right, I cannot get aliasing. And it is making higher order harmonics. Look, it's making a, a higher order harmonic at 20 kilohertz. I'll increase the input. So again, I'm making those harmonics stronger. So I'm making stronger, higher order harmonics and still no aliasing. And as I showed earlier in Plugin Doctor with the Puig Tech, the harder I drove the input, the more saturation was made, the more aliasing that was created. But as you can see here, I can drive the input and I'm not getting any aliasing. Now, something you do need to know, this is very important, is that in Access Analog, you can get some aliasing in Access Analog. Now, the reason this is, that the only way that you can get aliasing in this is to completely abuse um, and distort and clip um, the plugin and software itself. Now, obviously, the hardware is being streamed online, okay? So it's analog being processed through digital, streamed back to me okay so uh, at first i thought it was like clipping the converters which was creating distortion which was then creating aliasing but speaking to other people i think i could fairly say that it's to do with the streaming software because that's been processed in the digital so if you are really abusing the signal and you are distorting that signal being streamed then it's going to create a lot of higher order harmonics which is then going to cause aliasing as you can see here Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print two sweeps. I'm going to print a sweep um, with the input hit as hard without um, overloading um, the Access Analog software. And I'm also going to um, print a sweep um, actually clipping and showing you the aliasing that can be brought in by really clipping the software itself. Now, the interesting thing for me is that um, the hardware itself doesn't actually make that much harmonics. Okay, it does make harmonics, but they're not really that strong, um, which is quite interesting to me because all the Pultex that I've tried have got a crap ton, an absolute crap ton of uh, harmonics in them. And the harmonics are, are quite light. It's actually quite a clean Pultec, actually, um, which is quite interesting. But as you can see, there is no aliasing. There is no bounce back whatsoever at all. But obviously, um, as you can see, if you clip and you distort and um, the signal being fed back um, lossless to you, then that can introduce aliasing, as again, you're in the digital domain. 
Now, as much as they give Waves um, a hard time about Alias, and um, at least they gave it a crack. Okay, at least they actually tried to model the harmonics because um, there are some plugins that haven't even bothered their arse to do it. Now, for anybody that has a strong affiliation with UAD, <laughs> cover your eyes now. Um, see the legacy plugins, their very first plugins that don't make any harmonics, or the ones that I've tried anyway. So here is the Pultec, the legacy Pultec, um, the UAD. And as you can see, there is no harmonics whatsoever. So it can't sound like a Pultec. It can't, because I've not even bothered their arse to match, like to model the harmonics. Um, even what annoys me, the Pro Legacy, is like what they call it, the Pro Legacy, <laughs> skin, no harmonics whatsoever. And I'll show you later on another example as well. But it just goes to show, and it just goes to show um, that some plugins um, in the past and some plugins still do it to this day, market plugins as analog emulations and don't bother to even like recreate any harmonics because as I've shown in the hardware, there is harmonics in the hardware. So if you're going to recreate um, a faithful representation, there has to be harmonics being created by the plugin for it to be faithful. Right, so let's have a look into API this time, okay? So this is the API 5500, uh, which I've actually included in my other video looking at analog non-linearities um, with uh, EQs. Now, as you'll notice, um, I have raised the output um, a little bit, um, just so I'm getting a bit of a little bit of a stronger signal in here. Um, and again, just so you can kind of see the harmonics a little bit better um, in terms of kind of like the harmonics that this thing can generate, right? So that's the harmonics there. Okay, there you go. You've got a bit of noise in there as well. That's what happens. Okay, so let's compare that to the Lindo 50 channel, right? Which um, again, I featured in the EQ video as well. So it's making harmonics. Okay, it's not the same <laughs> harmonics as we can see. You can switch it off completely. Okay, so the un these two units would sound different. Okay, there is harmonics there. But in terms of the harmonic response, in terms of the order of harmonics that are made, it's a different order of harmonics. So these two units would sound different. Now let's see how our old, our old friend Waves fares. Okay, so this is the 550B from Waves as a standard used by many, many, many people. So off the bat, there's no harmonics. However, if we raise the output a little bit, look at that. We're getting some harmonics in there. Very, very low, but still. So we're having one order of harmonic, right? That's it, right? A first order harmonic. That's all we're having there. It's got it's got the noise in there, but we've got one order of harmonic. That is it. One order at 2K. Look at the difference between the hardware, right? Look at the difference. Look at one, two, three, four, five, six. Six orders of harmonics. One order of harmonics in the 550B. It's just like, it's just nonsense. It's nothing like a 550B at all. And if in, in the fact that you have to like absolutely crank your output to get that and bring in more audible noise, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's just, it's just pretty redundant, if I'm being honest with me. I just, I just don't get it. I just, I just don't get it at all. So how about we have a look at actual saturation, okay? Units that are made to saturate, units that are made to make as much harmonics as possible almost kind of physically possible. Right, so let's take the black box HG2. Okay, we all love it. Loads and loads of people use it, okay? So as you can see here, I have absolutely maxed out every saturation setting in the black box. Maxed. Now look at how much higher order harmonics has been made at 20k there. Look at that. <laughs> what are you talking? Maybe minus 22, 23 dB? That's a lot. No aliasing whatsoever. That is a lot, a lot of high order harmonics being made there. But again, if you hit it too hard, and as you can see, you're clipping the output, you will get aliasing, okay? It will make more harmonics and it will alias, okay? Because you're abusing the software. But again, if you don't abuse the output and you don't clip it, then again, you can make as much saturation as you want, okay? You work within the limitations of the software which is the exact same as the analog because you wouldn't hit the analog as hard as you would. Right, so let's compare that with the black box plugin, right? So as you can see, I've, I've, I've got the saturation and the triode absolutely maxed. And I'll bring in the pen toad now. So it's looking good, it's looking good. That has a lot of high order harmonics there, right? That's really impressive, but it just slips. It just slips. You get to a certain point in the pen toad and it 
just then starts to alias and it kind of goes out of control. Um, and it doesn't matter what you do to your output, okay? Because again, it's not access analog. Um, it doesn't matter what you do to your output, it's done. You cannot remove that aliasing. But I will have to say that um, it is still very impressive to me. You can, honestly, you can get a ton, a ton of saturation out the HG2 black box, the new plugin. Right, so let's go back to UAD, because I did say I'd go back to UAD. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of talk about how you can hear right, and listen to aliasing and what it does. Now, this is going to be quite an interesting sim test, okay? But first off, I'm going to show you again um, UED Legacy. So, as you can see here, and, and just so people don't moan, I've actually got it doing something, so it's boosting. And as you can see, it doesn't matter what you do, what you boost. It doesn't matter what you do. There is no harmonics in this Legacy plugin of the Helios. None at all. None at all. This is the updated Helios, which has line and mic. So, as you can see, the line um, element of it, makes a bit of harmonics, okay? You're making harmonics. If you switch to the mic, then happy days, right? You're getting a little bit of harmonics in there. So as you can see, hopefully we're getting some realistic modelled THD um, of the Helios unit. And in terms of aliasing, happy days. No aliasing whatsoever, and it is still making some high order harmonics. No aliasing whatsoever. So how about we abuse um, the mic pre a little bit? Let's go in a little bit harder. And look at that, an absolute mess. The worst aliasing that we've seen so far. And interestingly enough, look, it is only when it's at 40 to 70. If you use settings 20 and 30, no aliasing. But as soon as you go past that, alias is like an absolute bitch. And that is going to sound terrible. That's just going to sound awful. However, however, you might not believe me. You might not believe me, okay? You might say, that's plugin doctor, as many people say. Plugin doctor's not right. So how about we print a few sweeps, okay? So first off, what I'm going to do, I'm going to print a sweep at 30, which is the maximum you can hit it in Plugin Doctor um, without it showing um, aliasing, right? So we'll print a sweep and we'll see um, if the sweep ties in to what we're seeing in Plugin Doctor. So as you can see there, yes, look, there is the slightest little bit of aliasing. There is a slight little bit of bounce back in there, but uh, it's nothing that you're going to notice. It's very, very slight. And yeah, it's quite a good bit of harmonics in there, quite a lot of harmonics, but there is no aliasing that we have to worry about. You can see it at the top when it hits 20k, there's a slight, slight little bounce back, but it's that stuff like that's going to be inaudible, right? It's going to be inaudible. Let's move to 40, okay? Again, just an extra 10 dB in the mic pre, okay? So let's print a sweep and let's see if it is genuinely true that we are getting a ton of aliasing. Right, so as you can see here, this is something that confused me a little bit, okay? Because I was like, wow, okay, it doesn't actually, is that aliasing or is it not aliasing? Now, what I can tell you is, and I'm pretty sure it is, some people may say I'm wrong, but all of those, all of that bright orange, I'm going to say right now that that is all aliasing, but it is a cluster of aliasing. I'm going to actually say it, that there's that much aliasing that it's actually, that it uh, makes it difficult to see the different strands of aliasing. It is just aliasing on top of aliasing on top of aliasing on top of aliasing. It's just an absolute mass of aliasing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, at 70 now, and we're going to see if that kind of that kind of bright orange where the aliasing should be, if that's going to get more intense, okay? Is that colour going to get more intense? Right? Yes, it does. Right? See how it gets brighter? It's just aliasing on top of aliasing. No aliasing, aliasing, more aliasing, bang, more aliasing. It, it's look, it just it gets worse and worse. To me, that's just absolutely ridiculous. But also, just for anybody that says you never tested the legacy version, let's just do it like for fun. Let's just do a, a quick sweep of the legacy version just to kind of show you how clean it is and to prove that there is no harmonics whatsoever. So there you go, there is no harmonics, no aliasing, no harmonics, just a single tone, okay? So there you go, that's what it should look like. Harmonics, no harmonics whatsoever, absolutely clean, clean as a whistle. Now, as I was um, a little bit confused as of what I was seeing in RX-7, because normally I can see the different strands of aliasing, I was like, is it, like, is it definitely aliasing? Is all that kind of bright colour, is that just all the aliasing? like just kind of blending together making a, just a massive cluster um, of aliasing so what I'm going to do is we're going to actually do a test that you can do yourself right so I've got the 10k tone 
okay? The 10K tone that we we'll use for A-Listen, right? Now, what I'm going to tell you is, again, this might be a little bit annoying and it might maybe hurt some people's ears, so I'm giving you a warning right now. Um, it's going to be probably quite hard to hear um, through phone speakers and stuff, but if you're wearing headphones, again, just, like, take a break if you need to, because as as a high ringing tone as a very high tone and it, it can get quite annoying but this is an easy way of kind of hearing for yourself what the aliasing is doing okay so first off let's hear it at 20 okay that's your tone okay that's your tone sounds like a 10k tone let's move up to 30 so there you go not too bad hear that tone can you hear it it's kind of low, it's, it, the, the note's gone higher, sounds, sounds like a siren a little bit. Hear it, that kind of low kind of ringing, it's getting worse. It's getting worse, isn't it? And then look at that, sounds like a fucking, <laughs> sounds like a fucking ambulance. It sounds awful, absolutely awful, doesn't it? Look, clean 10k tone, clean as a whistle, very clean. That's been added to the signal. Right, so as you can hear, that's been added to the signal. Okay, you've got your 10k signal and all that alias and all of those low harmonics, those random uh, unmusical harmonics are being brought into the audible frequency spectrum and that is why the 10k tone, which is very, very high, is being absolutely masked by all these lower frequencies, which is why the, the test tone becomes lower. You can hear it, it's lower, and these awful, god-awful, horrible, unmusical sounding tones are just completely overtaking that 10k tone, and that is what is going to happen. <laughs> That's what's going to happen to your source. That's just the test tone at 10k. Think about that being, like, drenched all over a track, okay? So that is how you can hear aliasing. Okay, now how could have UED fixed this? Okay, UED could have fixed this by using oversampling like what we've shown um, in the Noise Ash Real Tech, right? So, what I've done is I've got the Fire Cobra. Now, you can get this from United Plugins. This is probably the best saturation plugin I've seen in terms of oversampling, taking away all aliasing. Like, I'm talking a crap ton of saturation, like full saturation. And honestly, like, no aliasing is clean as a whistle. It's honestly one of the best that I've seen, and the best examples of oversampling. It's one of the best saturators out there, in my opinion, if you oversample it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the same 10K test tone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it on its own, and then I'm going to have um, no oversampling. And what you're going to hear is that the more I oversample, the more the tone gets higher and closer to the original 10k tone because there is no aliasing, there is no unmusical frequencies lower than the fundamental being brought in. So it stays truer to the tone and all you're hearing is the harmonics, the overtones of the 10k signal. Right, so let's hear how that sounds. So as you can hear, the more you oversample, the truer to the tone it stays, okay? All you're getting is pure, pure harmonics. No aliasing whatsoever. And that is how it should be done. That is oversampling used to its best effect. Yes, it's a lot of CPU. But again, just listen like two, three, four times if you need to, just so you can hear the negative impact and the unmusical effect that aliasing has on that 10k tone and think just think about what that's adding to an entire source an entire mix an instrument that has such a wide range of frequencies just think about what that would do so guys thank you very very much for sticking around 
took me a long time to set all this up, but I learned a lot. Honestly, I always learn. With every video I do for you guys, I always learn so much in the process. So hopefully, guys, we can all agree that aliasing is something that you do not want to have in your source. Harmonics is musical, aliasing isn't. I've shown you that hardware does not alias. Aliasing that you see is not in the hardware, it is in the streaming software via Access Analog. And it's only if you distort that signal, okay? I've shown you analog does not alias. Aliasing is purely a digital phenomenon. You can only find aliasing in plugins. You cannot find it in the analog realm. A lot of plugins do alias and hopefully you have an understanding of how to look for it in the future. And hopefully, I've been able to teach you a few kind of geeky little tricks so you can do your own investigating and hopefully <laughs> I don't have to spend as much time <laughs> trying to detail um, how I do all this stuff. And hopefully you guys can have some fun. Hopefully a few myths have been debunked today as well as I always like to debunk myths along the way. But either way guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video and you have learned something from it, please like, consider sharing on wherever socials you may be, whether it be forums, Facebook, whatever, Twitter, do a few Twitter ones. I don't have many people on Twitter. And also, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. As I've just got over 7,000 subscribers, my aim is 10K. I don't know when I'll get there. I know I will get there. But if you do subscribe, it'll help me out. And trust me, there is content every single week. There is tons and tons of playlists, general audio geekness, plug and shootouts, analog versus digital. I've got tons and tons of great stuff for you. So if that's for you, consider subscribing. And I will see you hopefully again next week.